Hi, this is Paul Francis and welcome to the third video on the Certified Information Systems Auditor Review course. And for this video, we will be talking quickly about the, dom uh, the first domain, which is the Information System Auditing Process. So without further ado, let's start. Okay, so with Domain 1, Information Systems Auditing Process. Uh, before, the CISA job practice areas composed of knowledge statements and task statements. But now, they are basically more uh, geared towards subjects. But we won't be talking about the prior job practice areas, the 2016 job practice areas, because that will be relevant now. So we'll be talking about the 2019 uh, job practice areas. So for this domain one, it's actually uh, divided into two parts, which is planning and execution. So to get deeper into those one, we'll get to the next slide. So for planning, we have the first one, which is IS Audit Standards, Guidelines, and Code of Ethics. We'll go deeper into those things, uh, basically talking about the Code of Ethics itself and the audit standards that are provided by ISACA. And also why we need to have knowledge with business processes. Why is that important? I think it's very important. And of course, the different types of controls that are being implemented on, on, the, on the organizations. And the importance of doing risk-based audit planning. Why is it very important for us uh, CISA auditors? And also uh, the types of audits and assessments. So we can go deeper with those things on our next videos for those. And for the execution section, first we have the audit project management. This one is very important to every CISA, uh, CISAs, because uh, project management delves deeply on the cost-benefit analysis as well and how you're going to get through your uh, audit. And also we'll be talking about sampling methodologies just the, uh, on how we can, we can collect evidence and audit with evidence collection techniques and also the chain of custody, which is very important as well. Data analytics, of course, and then going through the reporting and communication techniques as well. Yes. And here are the supporting task statements, which basically give more information on the subjects we talked about earlier. And so the first one is we have to plan the audit to determine the information systems are protected, controlled, and provide value to the organization. So basically, we need to know, uh, we need to protect the information systems and also if they are still useful to the organization. And so we, um, in doing that, we need to conduct our audit in accordance with ISACA audit standards and risk-based IS audit strategy. It should be risk-based because, of course, as in one of the uh, important things that we have to know in the CISA job practices, it should be based on cost-benefit analysis. So that's why it's risk-based. So you need to use your audit based on risk. And of course, when we conduct our audit, there should be results. So we need to uh, communicate those, uh, we, uh, our progress, where, what steps are we on the plan, and the findings, results, and recommendations to stockholders. Only until recommendations. We don't implement the controls itself because that will impair our independence. And of course, after that, we need to conduct a follow-up to evaluate whether these have been sufficiently addressed. Of course, we recommend something uh, which controls should be uh, implemented. We recommend, we recommend those. And then we conduct a follow-up audit if, if those controls are actually put in place and whether the risks are being sufficiently addressed or mitigated. Okay, so that's it for this uh what third video on the CISA review course basically just a quick overview on the first domain information system auditing process so next up we will talk about the IS audit standards guidelines and code of ethics so please don't forget to subscribe here and and click on the bell button so you get notified when the video is up hopefully by Thursday I'll be putting up that video already and the slides will be available on my website, which is paulfrancis.org. We, I hope to see you there. And if you have any questions, please comment down below so that I can answer them on our Q&A section as well. So there, thank you and good luck with your studies.